Hi there Grade Nines and welcome back to Worksheet Cloud Maths. I was just actually thinking yesterday was my husband's birthday and I started thinking about all of you guys that have had birthdays of during April and May and are going to have birthdays in May and I just wanted to wish you a very very happy birthday if you have already had one and happy birthday in advance if you're going to have one. Don't worry, I won't sing to you. I think you might just go a little insane and want to run away. And I don't want you to do that because we've got some exciting stuff planned for today's lesson. Um, but I just want to say, if you haven't been able to celebrate your birthday as you usually do, um, just chin up because next year will be so much better. And you are still able to have a happy birthday being at home. Okay, let's get on with today's lesson. We're going to carry on with our functions and relations, and it is our fourth lesson in this series. Um, and I just want to remind you, if you have any questions or any queries, to please email grade9 at worksheetcloud.com, and somebody will get back to you with an answer. Okay, let's carry on with today's lesson. Okay, we're going to look at finding a formula and graphing. Okay, so we've been finding a formula, um, and but we haven't graphed yet. So now we're going to take our ordered pairs and we're going to put them onto a graph. Okay, let's have a look. There's a table that's not new to you and you know how to use the y equals mx plus b to work out the formula. But let's do it anyway. We'll just go over it as revision. Right. Remember, we look at the change in y over the change in x. And if we have a look there, our change in y Minus 9 to minus 5, we are going to add on 4. Minus 5 to get to 1, we are adding on 6. And from 1 to 7, we're adding on another 6. Right? Then we're going to look at our change in x. Minus 3 to minus 1 is 2. Minus 1 to 2 is 3. And 2 to 5 is also 3. We are adding on 3. Remember, those are like um, fractions. Well, they're not like fractions. They are actually fractions. 4 over 2, 6 over 3, and 6 over 3, and we end up with an answer of 2. That 2 is our m value, so we can plug it into our formula. So y is equal to 2x plus b. Now what do we do? We actually plug in an ordered pair. You can use any of the ordered pairs. Remember I told you in a previous lesson, you can use any of the ordered pairs, and you can plug it in, and you will get the b value. Right, so we're going to use the first one where y is minus 9 and x is minus 3. So it will be minus 9 is equal to 2 times minus 3 plus b. It's going to be minus 9 is equal to minus 6 plus b. We take the 6 across the equal sign. It changes to a positive. So minus 9 plus 6 is equal to b. And so b is equal to minus 3. So we've got our formula is equal to y is equal to x minus 3. So y is equal to 2x minus 3. Sorry. That is our formula. Right. What are we going to do with this? Well, there's our formula. There's the table that we used to get to that formula. And we are now going to graph it on what we call a Cartesian plane. Now, as you can see, you've probably graphed things so, so, so far on, as a um, bar graph or a histogram um, or a line graph, but not with four quadrants. And in the next lesson, we'll go a little bit more into what the Cartesian plane is made up of. But for now, we can look at our x um, axis, which is our horizontal axis, and the y axis, which is our vertical axis. Where they cross is the point of origin. It is also where they are both naught. So where y is naught and x is naught is the intersection of the y and x axis. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to plot our ordered pairs. So the first one that you can see that's popped up there is the minus 3, minus 9 point. Okay, remember, minus 3 is x. We always put our x first, and then the y value comes next, and that is minus 9. Okay, and we will label it. So we put minus 3, minus 9. The next one will be minus 1, minus 5. So where x is minus 1, y is minus 5. We label that one 2, and then it's 2 and 1. As you can see, x is 2, y is 1, label it. And then we've got where x is 5 and y is 7, and we label that one 2. Our next thing to do is we then take our ruler and we join the dots. 
Okay, very similar to, to what you did as a child and you made up pictures with joining the dots because you found the numbers in sequence. It's a pretty similar thing, it's just a little bit more advanced now. Okay, once you've done that, you now label the graph. You label the line. Y is equal to 2x minus 3. So that formula belongs to that line with those given points. All right, okay, let's see what's next. We need to now flip it around a little bit. If you are given the formula y is equal to 4x minus 5 and you are told that you can fill in a table where x is minus 1, 1, 2 and 4. Let's have a look. There's our table. Um, we've filled in our x values from what we've been given. We now need to substitute in and find out what the y value is according to that formula that we've been given. So there we go, we've done this quite a lot already, so I think this is becoming old hat to you. Um, but let's carry on and go through each one of the four um, x values that we've been given. So y is equal to 4 times minus 1 minus 5. That will give me y is equal to minus 4 minus 5, and that will be minus 9. Okay, we fill that in on the table. So where x is minus 1, y will be minus 9. The next one, we're going to fill in where x is 1. So it's 4 times 1 minus 5, which is 4 minus 5, and that gives me minus 1. Where x is 1, y is minus 1. The next one, we, we are given the x value of 2. So 4 times 2 will be 8 minus 5 gives us 3. So where x is 2, y is 3. And then the last one, where x is 4, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 minus 5 gives me 11, and so where x is 4, y is 11, and those are our ordered pairs. That is an ordered pair, that is an ordered pair, that is an ordered pair, and that is an ordered pair. And now we are going to plot our ordered pairs on our Cartesian plane. We label our x axis, we label our y axis, and we start plotting our points. So minus 1, minus 9, there you can see the little dot appeared, and we label it. Minus 1, minus 9. Remember, we always read off the x value first, so we go to the minus 1 on the x um, axis, and we go down to the 9 on the y axis, or the minus 9 on the y axis. And then we put a dot, and we label it. The next one will be 1, minus 1, and there we go, 1, minus 1, and label it. The next one, 2 and 3. And we label it. Remember, the x value first and then the y value. And then the last one is 4, 11. And we're going to label that too. So we've got all four points plotted. We've labeled them. We take a ruler and we join the dots with a solid line. Okay? Then we will label the line with the formula. Y is equal to 4x minus 5. Right. Everybody got that? You know how to substitute. You know how to work out unknown values, so that shouldn't have been hard. The new thing now is plotting those points on a graph. Right, let's try another one. Here we are given the formula y is equal to minus half x plus 2. We are asked to fill in the table knowing the values of x being 8, 6, 4 and 2. And so we draw up our table. Filling in our x values leaving our y values out because we're going to calculate those. Right, we've got minus half times 8 plus 2 is minus 4 plus 2 because minus half times 8 is minus 4 plus 2, we're going to end up with minus 2. So where x is 8, y is minus 2. Right, we're going to substitute in 6. So minus half times 6 would be minus 3 plus 2, it's going to give me minus 1. So where x is 6, y is minus 1. Right, we're now going to, oh, I've swapped it around, doesn't matter. We'll work out our minus, um, our 2 first. And we're going to do 2 times a half, times minus half is going to give me minus 1 plus 2, and that's going to be 1. Okay, and we're going to fill in the, the wrong one, but never mind, we'll work out the 4 now. Minus half times 4, that's going to give me minus 2 plus 2, and that's going to give me naught. So that where x is 4, y is 0, and where x is 2, y is 1. All right, let's have a look. Here's our Cartesian plane. We label our x-axis, we label our y-axis, and we start plotting the points. So the first ordered pair is 8 and minus 2. So where x is 8, 
y is minus 2. That's a little bit off. Please make sure that when you label, um, when, you, when you plot your point, it is right on where the lines meet. Okay, the next one is where x is 6. Uh, sorry, you need to label that point. Where x is 6, um, y is minus 1. Then where x is 4, y is 0. And where x is 2, y is 1. Okay, sorry, the graph is probably shifted just slightly, but you'll get the idea. You join the dots, you label your line. y is equal to minus half x plus 2. Okay, now you can see that this line goes in the opposite direction to the other line that we drew. And we now say that that has a negative gradient. And we'll get to this in the next lesson. But whenever your m value is a minus, it gives you a negative gradient. So it goes the other way, basically starting on the right, going up towards the left. Okay, positive gradient, starting on the left, going up towards the right. Okay, right, let's have a look at another one. So we're going to use one that we've done before, right from looking at the diagrams. Can you remember this one from last time? We looked at the diagrams and we were told that um, the units of the perimeter, the unit of each block, had it was 1. Okay, um, so we wanted to know the correlation between the number of blocks and the perimeter of the shape. If each side of a block is one unit. All right, so we set up a table to show the correlation. Let me just move myself out of the way again. Okay, so there's the table. When you had one block, your perimeter was four. When you had three blocks, your perimeter was eight. And six blocks, the perimeter was 14. Okay, the next thing we had to do is we had to work out the formula using mx, y is equal to mx plus b. We look at the change in y over the change in x, and your answer is 2, because 4 over 2 and 6 over 3, the answer is both 2. Okay, right, so you've got y is equal to 2x plus b. That is part of your formula, because you've substituted in your m. You've found your m value. We now need to plug in, and we need to find our b value. So y is equal to 2x plus b. We're going to take our first um, ordered pair, and we're going to put that in. We're going to um, substitute it in. So 4 is equal to 2 times 1 plus b, which means that 4 is equal to 2 plus b, which means that 4 minus 2 is equal to b, and so b is equal to 2. Therefore, we have got our um, formula y is equal to 2x plus 2. Right, next step. We are now going to graph it on the Cartesian plane. And there you can see the Cartesian plane. So let's plot the points. We've now got the points in, um, to, in the table. We were given them, or we worked them out in the previous lesson. So now we're going to go where x is 1, y is 4. So let's see. Where x is 1, y is 4. Can you see that? And we label it. Okay. The next one, where x is 3, y is 8. And where x is 6, y is 14. Right, so we've got all our points. We then draw the line together. Um, and then we label it y is equal to 2x plus 2. And that is a positive gradient. Remember in our last, um, on our last diagram, the line went that way. That's a negative gradient. This is a positive gradient. So when you start... At the bottom on the left hand side and you draw up towards the right it gives you a positive gradient have a look at your m value it is positive and that's what shows you your gradients all right everybody happy with that right what have we learned so far guys we've actually done such a lot um, we've learned how to create a formula from a table when x values are in a sequence so remember, we just looked at the difference in the y values, and then we looked at the x value in relation to the y value, and we were able to work out a formula from that. That was right in the beginning lesson, in lesson one. Then we learned how to create a formula using the structure y is equal to mx plus b, and that's actually a whole lot easier because it gives us a structure to work with. Um, and so we know that we will definitely be right. 
We also learned how to test that formula using a number of different ordered pairs that we were given. Then we learned how to work out unknown values once we'd established the formula was correct. Okay, remember, we got the um, tables with, num with letters that needed numbers to be filled in, and we were able to work out those unknown values. We then learned how to create a table from diagrams. We did that in the last lesson, and then from there to work out a formula. We also then, use, today, have learned how to use the Cartesian plane to graph our findings, and then we learned how to establish whether or not the gradient is positive or negative. Um, remember, if it goes from the bottom left up to the top right, that's positive. If it goes from the bottom right up to the top left, it is a negative gradient. Okay, so we've actually done so much, guys. And um, next time, we're going to go on and make it a little bit more involved. Um, and I hope you're enjoying this series so far. Remember, if there's any questions, if there are any questions or any queries, to email um, grade 9 at worksheetcloud.com and somebody will get back to you with an answer. Okay, I hope to see you next in the next lesson where we've got some more exciting stuff planned um, and we're going to flip the formula around a little bit and find a new formula. So please join us next time. Right, I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, ahead um, and see you next time. Bye-bye for now.